This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. Good evening everyone, I'm Angel Jacob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. Colorectal cancer is one of the most common types of cancer diagnosed in the Philippines. Colon and rectum are the last parts of our intestine. They are where stools develop and are passed through before they come out. They are also the only part in the body that has a lot of bacteria. Out of 1,000 people in the population, four Filipino women would have succumbed to colorectal cancer by age 75. Moreover, 90% of colon cancer patients are over 50 years old or older. As all cancers are, you know, whether it's in the breast, colon, brain, etc., there is a mutation in one of those cells, and the mutation produces an abnormal cell that has the ability to keep growing. Now, the specific thing about colorectal cancer is it starts with a polyp, a small little growth that is not really cancerous, but over time, let's say 10 years, it can already mutate into a cancer. Most people with colorectal cancer are blindsided the moment they are diagnosed, especially because it usually does not have any symptoms. The usual symptoms of colorectal cancer will be blood in the stools, or there's a change in the way you move your bowels, whether you used to be very regular before and now it's not so regular, or you're, you used to be constipated, now it's diarrheic, or vice versa. So there's a change in the way you move your bowels. Third, there may be weight loss. Uh, you can't explain it, you're not dieting, but you're losing weight. Fourth, you may be anemic. Uh, you don't know why you're anemic or pale. And then five, um, you may have some pain. The good news is that it is one of the most preventable malignancies as long as you are screened early on. It is also suggested that you undergo screening once you reach the age of 50. We recommend that for people at age 50 to start getting themselves screened, even if they're not feeling anything. In fact, the definition of screening is these are tests done on people who are healthy, they're not feeling anything. What are the main causes of colon cancer? What are the risk factors involved? What are some of the warning signs that you should look out for? Find out the answers tonight on MedTalk. And joining us tonight is Dr. Rami Rojas, the president of the ASEAN Society of Colorectal Surgeons and the director of the Medical City Colorectal Clinic. He is also the chief of the section of colorectal surgery of the Asian Hospital and Medical City Medical Center. Rather. Also with us is Dr. Dion Sakdalan, one of the only two practicing female colorectal surgeons of the Philippines from the medical city and the only Filipino awarded with the International Guest Scholarship from the American Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeons. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Good evening, doctors. Welcome to the show. Hello, good, good evening. evening. Good evening, Angel. It's Colorectal Angel. Cancer Awareness Month, and we'd like to get to know more about uh, this, this type of cancer. So let's start off by asking, what is colorectal cancer? Dr. Dion, yeah. ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, colorectal yes. cancer is a general term for any growth that, that is proven to be malignant or a bad tumor in the colon or the rectum. Earlier, we have a, um, a, a short explanation of the GI or the gastrointestinal tract. No? So the colon is the large intestine, and then the rectum is towards the end, going into the anus where we move our bowels. So colorectal cancer is any growth along the large intestine into the rectum and into the rectum. Now we want to differentiate if it's really colon or rectal, rectal. Yes, because the different, there is a difference in the management. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, you mentioned the difference in the management of the colon. Colon cancer colon versus, versus rectal, rectal, rectal cancer. cancer. Dr. Yeah. Rami, colon cancer, the difference between colon cancer and rectal cancer. Yes, the difference between the two is in the management actually. To patients, it may not be that different, but the management is, is different and even the way they present and the way they progress can be different. Uh, one of the main uh, treatment modalities with rectal cancer is radiotherapy, which you don't use usually for colon cancer. Mm -hmm. um, both, however, will require some form of surgery. Both will sometimes require chemotherapy. And also in understanding colorectal um, cancer, we also have to know uh, more about uh, the basics of uh, our digestive system and how it works in relation to colon cancer, colorectal yes. cancer. Dr. Dion? Yeah, well, we know that when we eat, food goes through the mouth into the esophagus, and then it goes to the stomach where it's um, initially digested. And then after that, it goes to the small intestines, and some of the nutrients, or most of the nutrients, are absorbed in that area. And then it then goes into the large intestines and then into the rectum, um, where it is stored before we eventually move them in the toilet. No? Mm -hmm. So that's the general route of the food that we eat. So um, when there is growth in the colon or in the rectum, then there comes or there will be some symptoms of obstruction because there is an impedance of the f flow of the feces. Mm -hmm. And then there can be also um, a feeling of bloatedness because air and feces doesn't go down as normally as it should. And then the growth may also bleed. That's why sometimes our stools, if we have those tumors, or would, would be blood stained. So those are the symptoms that may occur if we have growth in the colon and in the rectum. Mm. Dr. Nor Rami, you'd like well, to Well, something everyone has to understand is normally the colon is filled with bacteria. Now, it's the dirtiest organ in the body. The colon does not absorb nutrients anymore. It actually just absorbs a little water so that our, our stools become more solid. Mm -hmm. no? But it, these bacteria also have a role to play in terms of uh, formation of certain vitamins. And they are a fine balance. No? We are in a fine balance with these bacteria. And um, it's in the disturbance of that balance that sometimes you get other diseases. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that the colon is naturally dirty, but we are in equilibrium with the bacteria in our body, within our colon, and therefore we're healthy. Mm -hmm. okay. So the dirt in the, in, the column, in the colon is healthy. We can't also be too clean <laughs> when, when it comes to You can to never the colon. clean the colon. Never. Uh, 24 hours after you're born, you're going to have bacteria already in your colon. You okay. can never clean that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it balances the flora and yes, fauna yes. inside and your colon. And these bacteria are good bacteria. It becomes a protective mechanism yes. in the colon. And there are also bad bacteria. So mm -hmm. there is a balance that is usually maintained for healthy people. So a healthy colon has that balance of the good and the yes, bad bacteria. Yes. You mentioned earlier, Dr. Dion, that there's the feeling of bloatedness mm -hmm. or, a feel, uh, or uh, you notice blood in the stool, but mm -hmm. sometimes uh, can it be mistaken for something else, for something else that we feel in our body, maybe um, hemorrhoids for, for the, the blood in the stool and maybe just gas in the stomach, that's why we feel bloated. Yes, so th these symptoms are not specific for colon or rectal cancer. That's why at any point in time that there is uh, any change in the bowel habits or there's blood in the stools or there's something awkward with what you usually feel, then you should always, um, at, at, if, if, if possible, consult a doctor because a doctor would be able to differentiate all these symptoms. They might probably uh, request for some examinations just to make to get a good um, diagnosis of those problems that you present mm -hmm. with. Uh, when one notices that there's a problem and one seeks uh, medical advice, what, what is hampered or what is destroyed, so to speak, uh, when the colon has, uh, has this problem, Dr. M? Well, you, you, you mentioned the hemorrhoids, mm -hmm. for instance. That's a very common condition. In fact, in the age group of around 20s and 30s, if you have blood in the stools, bright red blood, it's most probably hemorrhoids, which are not life-threatening. However, they are also, they could be also symptoms of colorectal cancer. By the way, hemorrhoids don't become colorectal cancer, but 
many times we see patients who are diagnosed late and then they think they have hemorrhoids when in fact it's something else. Mm -hmm. That's why we recommend to be, that they be checked. Uh, what goes on in the colon? Many things. You know, there are many diseases. That's why there's a specialty called colorectal surgery. There are so many diseases. In the GI tract, it's one of the organs that is, has most diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are many things, too many things to talk about. Now we're, we're focused on colorectal cancer because it's a very common cancer around the world. And around the world, they're all celebrating Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's in the West, where it's very high, but also in Asia, where it's really high among the industrialized countries. And we think we're heading there. We're going to see a lot more colorectal cancers in the Philippines. And therefore, the awareness has to be really brought up further. Mm -hmm. you know. Is it common here in, in the Philippines for a woman or a man to have colorectal cancer? Yeah, I think um, the, incidence. The, the incidence is quite high and it ranks third or fourth. Um, as far as cancer is concerned, no? That's high, huh? In, in the and ranking, and women, third or fourth. Men and women get it uh, equally. Equally. In fact, in Singapore, it's the number one cancer. No. Uh, why? Because they have a very good anti-smoking program in, in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Women is still get breast cancers, but when you combine the men and the women together, you know, men don't get breast cancers uh, too, too often. So when you combine it together, colorectal cancer becomes the number one for mm -hmm. them. So it's quite a common cancer that hits both sexes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, while doing my research, I, I, came, I stumbled upon the uh, statistics that women get it more. But now from, from your explanation, it's the same. It's, it's the same. Actually, it's, it's the, the same, same. Well, risk why for did that, both. Why, why is it that, you know, when, when well, you I check the net, it, it's the women who, who get it more? I think because if you look at the Philippines, the famous people who seem to have gotten it are, are, are famous women, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that might have hit our, our consciousness, but uh, it really hits both, both sexes. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about sexes, both sexes, the male and the female. Yes. Now let's talk about the age of, of those who uh, mm -hmm. can get colorectal cancer. At what age? Usually uh, the, most the, the older you become, the higher the risk of getting colorectal cancer. However, um, because we also go to a government hospital, we We've been seeing a lot of patients who are young, like 40s or 50s or even 30s, with, uh, with a stage 3 or 4 colon or rectal cancer. There's a difference, though, in the way we feel uh, co what causes this. In the young, we usually think it's genetic. Something in their genes mutated that caused mm -hmm. them to get cancer so young. For majority, around 85%, it's the aging process. As we age, our colon ages, our cells mutate and so most of the patients we see are above 50. Mm -hmm. okay. Doctors will talk more about how colorectal cancer begins, prevention and other yes. uh, important aspects of understanding and learning more about colorectal cancer when MedTalk returns. Did you know that many famous personalities battled colorectal cancer? According to the Medical City Colorectal Clinic, former President Corazon Aquino and Pope John Paul II were some of those who fought the disease in the latter stages of their lives. We're back here on MedTalk, still talking about colorectal cancer. This time, let's discuss, um, we, before we went to the break, I said we'll talk about how does colorectal cancer begin and what causes colorectal cancer. Dr. Rami. Okay, you have to imagine what's going on inside the colon. If you have a colon cell that's growing and changing every, every day, it's changing. At the same time, it's filled with all these bacteria and your food, maybe. Uh, leftover uh, food that might be carcinogenic if you've eaten something that might be cause one of those cells to mutate and once those cells mutate they don't become normal cells they become a little abnormal and they may still be benign in this case and the unique thing about colorectal cancer they start as a polyp which is a benign but abnormal growth 
Now, if you leave that growth alone, then they start changing quickly, and maybe after 10 years, they can become cancer. But a polyp is not a cancer cell. A polyp is not a cancer cell yet, but if you leave it alone, usually within 10 years, it can become a cancer. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that's a golden opportunity to prevent colorectal cancer from, from developing. If you can pick up the polyp and take it out, then you remove the possibility of it becoming a cancer. Mm -hmm. Polyps never come back once they can Oh, hell, they might. And that's why if we find a polyp, then we will tell the patient, you may need more frequent monitoring because it might come back and it's better to pick it up as a polyp rather than as a cancer. Mm -hmm. And That's we do send these polyps for biopsy. So if mm -hmm. we, if during screening or any colonoscopic procedures and we get to have the chance to get that polyps, we send it for pathology. And then there are kinds of polyps that are more prone to develop cancer and there are some that are really benign. Mm -hmm. So we advise the patients accordingly based on the histopath reports of these polyps that we take away. Mm -hmm. So they know also how to proceed after yeah. the yes. biopsy has come back. And yes. then the other thing is, uh, as part of the sequence, if a polyp becomes a cancer, it can be an early cancer still. And it take, may take several months become, before it progresses uh, into the worst stages. So again, early stage colorectal cancer is one of the most curable cancers if we pick it up early. Mm -hmm. That's why screening is so effective for colorectal cancer. Mm -hmm. You mentioned